Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles. So this text starts from the position of us being outsiders in this world, but not of it. To abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. The struggle with our flesh is a real battle. The old Adam that we have from our conception and the new creation within us that we got at our baptism. Those two things will continue to battle with each other until we stop breathing. This is important because non-believers are watching us. And it's not easy but he promises to be with us as we go through this. Sometimes the old Adam screams, this is not fair. And often when he says it, he's not lying. You can be treated unfairly by those who should be your champions for fair treatment and justice. Parents, teachers, officers of the law, politicians, but you, according to the text and according to Scripture, are still to submit. The only times Christians are called to disobey is when we are told to violate God's law. And God uses us in those cases to communicate His truth in love to those who are in authority over us, to our parents, to our teachers, to officers of the law or politicians. But here's the catch. We still have to submit. We are to voice our concern that something we've been told to do violates God's law and then be ready to receive the consequences for our disobedience if we are to disobey because it violates God's law in a submissive manner. Because this is how members of two kingdoms, citizens of two kingdoms are called to act in full submission to our Lord and Savior and in full submission to the authorities that God places in our lives. And when there is conflict, we are to pray and submit. This is second and fourth commandment stuff that we are discussing here this evening. Hallowed be thy name. We say it in the Lord's Prayer. Through my actions, although your name is already holy, let it be evident to those around me that you are holy and I wear your name and I represent you so I strive to be holy in the presence of others, to reflect well on you, to be a witness to others through our actions because we bear his name. Our witness through our obedience to the authority in our lives, not grudgingly, but with pure and upright heart, even when those around us know that we are being treated unfairly, unjustly. But justice belongs to God. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, says the text, so that when they seek, when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. The day of visitation is, in essence, when God reveals himself in the person of Christ and on that judgment day, the arrival of the new heavens and the new earth. God helps us to do well in the second and fourth commandments by creating us as loving and obedient creatures in his kingdom by washing us in the blood of the Lamb to make our acts of obedience and submission pleasing in his sight and by empowering us with the help of the Holy Spirit to will and to do things that faith seeks to do that are pleasing and give glory to God. 
this can reflect well on us and on the gospel in this life and in that great visitation. For this is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. Enduring punishment for our sins has maybe some temporal benefits. We might learn from our mistakes and behave more as we should in the future. But suffering unjustly, Jesus did not say, pick up your treasure and follow me. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. Suffering unjustly. That garners for us credit, this text implies. Credit that tells our neighbor who the Lord of our life is. A credit that gives glory to God. The old Adam does not like much of this suffering unjustly because he is me-centered. But in baptism, the new creation that is within us is Christ-centered. So, how do we do this thing? While the old Adam screams out like a three-year-old, that's not fair! And our new creation says, well, that must be the cross that my Lord wants me to pick up and carry. Be subject to the Lord's, for the Lord's sake to every human institution. You don't get to pick and choose, it says every. Whether it be to the emperor as supreme, to the governor sent by him, to punish those who do evil and praise those who do good. This is God managing his creation through the authorities he puts in place to punish the evil and to reward the good. It doesn't matter if you like who's in charge. God put them there to run your community, to run your church, to run your neighborhood association, to run your local school, to run the business that you might work for, to run your nation. God put them there and he says to us, honor and obey. That is your vocation as a citizen in both kingdoms. Not because you want to, but because this is the will of God, says the text. That by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people, live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. What does this look like? Honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect. This speaks to attitude, not just action. Not only the good master or leader, not only the gentle one, but also the one who is unjust. So it does not matter if you are treated fairly or not. The text doesn't address that, except to say that it doesn't have any bearing on how you obey and submit. Justice does not belong to you. It belongs to God. Be subject. That means willingly do as you are told within God's law. It is a blessing for us that he is both just and benevolent. And in his good, it's a good thing that it's his justice. It's not ours. Because if justice were ours, if it belonged to us, we would all get what we deserve. But he's loving, kind, and patient, 
holding his wrath at bay while his son bore our punishment. So we are blessed to spend eternity honoring our heavenly emperor who is supreme. In Jesus' name, amen.